Hello, hackers. What the heck is going on? Now, I just want to update things really quick here. Uh, but I know that in one of my past videos, one person, one viewer, commented that I am speaking too fast, which really surprised me. I guess the reason is I'm because I'm not a native English speaker and every other uh, retro YouTuber that I've seen are, are native English speakers. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that again. So I'm constantly, unlike them, I'm constantly worrying about my fluency in delivering like contents in English. So, one of my concerns is that I'm not speaking fluent enough, and in order to compensate, I'm trying to speak as fast as possible. I'm constantly pushing myself, just speak, 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 speak. Just, just tell something. So, I think that is the reason why I just keep pushing words out when I ha have the chance and uh, and I kind of pause like this one when I try to find the right word so I guess maybe slow things maybe slow things down can help but I'm I'm going to I'm going to release this video on like unedited to see to let you see what my state of kind of speaking is like a lot of misuse of words a lot of uh like fillers like uh so yeah whether you think it's okay, please leave some comments below. Because editing those out really takes time. And uh, that's the first. And the second is that uh, notice my intro of this video. Hello hackers, what the heck is going on? That means that hack is now the official name of my Z80 project. But one interesting thing that I found in the comment section is that people are generally okay with the name hack, but uh, people have a lot, a few problems with Hanker Education Computer. Somebody suggests it should be Hanker Edutainment Computer or Educational Computer. Uh, and one viewer actually suggests it shouldn't be Hanker, it should be like Hacker. I mean, guys, Hanker is a brand name, and I cannot brand my computer Hacker, and I'm in no position to represent the entire Hacker community. So, my decision is the computer still has the name Hank, not Hanker, uh, has the name Hack, but it will be the acronym of nothing just nothing so in later videos i will be only addressing it as the referring to it as the uh, the the hack so yeah that that's kind of the current decision and the graphics it has been decided as the v9958 i've been reading like the programmer's guide of the v9938 um like 80% of a Vinyl 1958 uh, and I really found now that it's a it's a good chip uh, it is a kind of okay tile engine with some sprite with I wouldn't call like great sprite like engine but it's an okay sprite engine 
I would prefer the Nintendo Pixel Processor, uh, Pix Pixel Processing Unit (PPU) over it, but I think it's fine. Uh, but it's also a smart frame buffer. That's that's what I like about it. Uh, you will see a video of me talking about smart frame buffers coming up uh, in a few days. So, yeah, and it's got a, a very simple blitter. I think, I don't think it's as powerful as the Amiga blitter, but it's powerful enough. It can output like 256 color at one, 256 uh, times 192, which is great. It's like VGA mode 13 style graphics, but lower resolution and it does not support a palette. I'm considering adding a palette using the C bus or the color bus, uh, but that is still in the air. And that, if I use to, it, if I decide to add a palette, it would be just a standard VGA, like VGA deck or VGA RAM deck. Uh, we'll give it basically VGA style palette like 256 from uh, 262,144 yes 2 to the power of 18 that is 6 bits for red green and blue but that will kind of be kind of useless because the V9958 has a YU, uh, not YU, YJK mode which can output a lot of colors at a slightly lower resolution so yeah not really not sure about that but V9958 is a done deal hey future Andy here during the editing I found out that I failed to talk about the drawbacks of the V9958, which is you need a 50 kilohertz, uh, a 15 kilohertz RGB monitor like that Sony PVM over there. I know you cannot see it, but it's, uh, it's basically the monitor in the Z80 Secret video. So you really need that to view the best image or even like the image as it's intended uh, it uses like a 9 bit not yes 9 bit like RGB system which means 512 colors but I think you can do more in YJK mode I don't really know but I think they are actually two different decks in the chip because it doesn't make sense to me uh, that the, the RGB deck should not be able to efficiently output graphics in like YJK it doesn't make sense to me but that is the case but in either way, composite will not deliver you the best result. And I understand that many people does not have composite or even S video televisions at their home. So that's a big drawback. And I think that's uh, the number one reason why the AB guy is so keen on a FPGA based solution for the X16 because uh, it can output VGA like the Vera can help with VGA. However, hack being hack, you will hear me say this hack being hack thing a lot in the future. It basically means that you can always add whatever feature you want to it. Like the RC2014, you can make adding boards with it. But the difference is 
if you can write the correct driver, you can run existing programs you on your graphics card. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I introduced this new thing, but nobody takes advantage of it and it will just die silently. No, you can do this new thing and a lot of programs will just run if you write the correct driver for it. That's, I think, one thing that makes the hacks stand out. And the other thing is that uh, this is the reason why I'm still like the hack being hacked is the reason why I'm still releasing the, the Z80 big update series because in that series I talk about a lot of pros and cons of different like solutions and I think that will be a great reference frame for those of you who want to build uh, your own hardware because remember although I chose like the V9958 and almost certainly chose the VYM2203 and uh, the TIPSG SN76489 uh, again, those are still kind of in question and the mono stereo thing is kind of not decided. But I kind of don't want to change that. Uh, but I've done researches into everything else. So, yeah. It will be a great resource for those of you who want to build your own hardware for the hack. Another thing I want to address is the sound issue. Uh, in a future video, you will see me. Uh, that video is actually recorded like a, a few days ago, but you will hear me say that the sound is an easy option because there's just like. PSG and FM and and DAC and digital to audio converter. There's not a lot of way to generate sound. However, uh, the problem with sound is that uh, you have to like emulate a lot. For example, you may have to emulate a like Texas Instruments SN seven six four eighty nine on a AY three eighty nine ten or the equivalent of that is the Yamaha SSG which is the YM twenty one forty nine F. You can do that, but it takes time. It takes computational power, and when you want to emulate things fast, those delays will kind of degrade the speed so my current idea is one YM2203 which is the OPN chip it has an SSG but unless unlike the YM2149F which is a pin-to-pin -pin compatible uh, to the AY3 chip uh it doesn't use like the general i think it's the, the the general instrument i don't know it's like the ay3 series bus which is really annoying to to interact with it has a standard z80 style or 8080 style bus that's what i like about it and it has ssg it has a simple fm engine However, I can see that those are just two chips glued together because the timing of these two chips are completely different. Even the read and write timings. So I think they're just like two chips connected to the same bus, but like in one package. That's kind of interesting, but it's like beside the point. It has two 8-bit I.O. ports and I intend to make them a stereo DAC but I'm kind of backpedaling currently from the stereo idea because I also want to add a, a TIPSG chip to like 
make emulation smoother and faster. Like the SN76489. Uh, and I want to add that to the like middle channel. However, if I do that, like the left channel will have one, like Yamaha PSG, and the right channel will have one. And the middle channel will have just everything else, and the left and right will have its own deck. But I think as a result, uh, I think as a result, the the stereo part of it won't be that useful because almost everything is output in mono. So yeah, I'm kind of back pedaling on that. However. There's a problem with model. I think it would be an overkill. It would be quite an overkill to assign three channels from the TI chip, three channels from the Yamaha chip, and uh, those are like PSG square wave channels, and three FM sounds, and two, st like not stereo, that's like two PCM channels to one single output channel. It would be like a total overkill. Actually, there's four PSG chip on the TI because there's a noise channel. But if you count the noise channel, I think that will make the, uh, the Yamaha chip, the YM2149 part of the YM2203. Uh, six channels because all of the PSG channels can output noise. So yeah, I don't think that's that's a good idea either. So the sound is kind of in the air, but uh, to have the Texas instrument chip on board gave me give me the option of emulating. The ClicoVision, the Sega S3 1000, and uh, a few other ch computers. I think the MTX used one. One of those, I, I don't really know. And and the Clico Atom, yes, yes, that's what I want to say. Yes, there there will be Clico Atom support because basically that's just one step from ClicoVision, so. Why not? Uh, another thing is that having the YM2203 support, which is YM2149 YM compatible, give me the chance of like making the computer MSX compatible. So, or MSX emulation compatible. That makes it possible to run MSX to MSX even to plus games, given that they don't need their own sound chip. So, that's a good thing. I'm even considering adding a YM2413 uh, OPLL chip. And that will give a, it's called MSX Music. I think MSX Audio is like the Yamaha standard and MSX Music is like the Panasonic standard. And Yamaha, the Yamaha standard like MSX Audio needs a specific chip from Yamaha and that chip is not available. So it's kind of sad because it can output Almost anything is, is like FM and sample based. Things the size, I think, is it? Or it's just a PCM playback chip. Those are two different things. I, I don't remember which one it is, but I think it can do like a playback sound from its own buffer. That's really great. Currently, with the output ports, you need to, it doesn't have a FIFO, it cannot do DMA, so you have to just 
push the bytes yourself by from CPU and that takes a lot of cycles which means when you are playing back samples you are not doing a lot so that might be a problem hey future Andy here so remember, whenever I say like the graphics is a done deal, like the sound is a done deal, I have selected this chip, I have selected that chip. Remember that hack being hack, you can always add uh, your own idea into the into the hack. So you can always make your own sound card. You can always make your own graphics card. And as long as you write a driver for it, there will be existing programs that can run with your hardware that can take advantage of your own hardware hack. You can even like write some proprietary hardware that only the proprietary programs can take advantage of, like the old 8-bit computers. Fine, go for it. But you may actually want to write drivers for your hardware because why not? Like more softwares will be able to use it. And I think like feel free to write drivers for other people's proprietary hardware. I mean, I mean, that will actually make them like more usable. Uh, how should I put it? Like, allow more programs to run on these hardware. I think these are the fun things that you can do on the hack that you cannot do on any other computers, basically. Any other 8-bit computers, basically. So, like, hack. <laughs> Even the name hack is not, like, a done deal. Think of the PC. I think, and I mean, like, there's the IBM PC, and there's like the Compact Portable, and there's like Compact Desk Pro, and there's like ASD Premium, and there's like this, and there's that, and nobody's calling their like. Dell PC, like HP PC, Compact PC. People are calling them that, but but those companies can come up with their own names. So feel free to call your computer whatever you want, but you may want to add like hack compatible, like in the description of that computer, so that people know what they are looking at and potentially what they are buying. So, yeah, that's the hack part. I may, at one point, I might want it to run a, like, official certification uh, center where people pay me, actually pay me to certify their computers as, like, 100% hack compatible and, uh, I just think I can run a website keeping a a record of all the officially certified hack compatible computers. But I finally decided not to do it because I don't want to be like the big brother running the hack project. I want like people putting their innovations into the project. I think one one guy in the X16 community I think that person actually argued that when you stop feature creeping, like your project is dead. Unfortunately, that is not possible. Like keep feature creeping on the X16 because for the X16, you need to stop somewhere to get into production. But for the hack, it's completely different story actually. Like, like if you are out there, shout out to that person. Feel free to join the hack community. 
So yeah, it's it's like a project you can always feature creep beyond what is imaginable. So yeah, I mean protect the mode on the Z80 is is kind of beyond imaginable already. So yeah, f feel free to add whatever you want. Uh, and I don't want to be like the big brother running everything about the hack. Like IBM didn't run official certification process for the PC that caused some problem, mainly due to people calling their computers PC compatible when they are actually not. But I think there's no law stopping you from doing that. Like, like, I'm not like registering the hack as a trademark so that I can control the use of that name. So, so I think just like the ink, like half compatible or incompatible PCs, those products will be legal, but they will be disadvantaged, I think, in the market. And that's what drove everybody to like 100% PC compatible architecture other than the BIOS. And, uh, and I think that's it. There's one thing left, which is emulation. I won't be able to provide emulation for all like Z80 based computers. But I think the first thing in line will be the MSX and the ClickoVision because they will have the hardware support. And I think the second in line will be uh, other computers and game consoles like the S3 1000 and I think there's a Casio PV 1000. And there will be like very emulation computers like the Spectrum. Uh, graphics access will be slow, but I think that will be possible. And uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions, you can put in comments below.